I think it was Bernard Venables that said, angling is applied natural history. And he was absolutely right. It's about so much more than fishing. Why I think it's important beyond anglers is because salmon are symbolic of, of a healthy river system. If they're not healthy, if they're not here, then the river is suffering. Right, I'm gonna go in. Is he, what's Dom doing? I love the Devon and I've been here many times. And I thought I should invite my friend Dominic, who is getting into angling. Just do it with your heads rather than your whole body. Don't be just leaning on. <laughs> I wanted to show him life beyond angling for a salmon. And the work that's being done here at Project Devran is a great example. The wild salmon, it sort of shows us where we are in the world. If we ignore our wild history and the, and the things we share this planet with, then, you know, it stands to reason. We're in trouble. What are, the, what are the main culprits for why, you, why salmon has declined so sharply? Since the mid-1980s, we've seen about a 70% decline in salmon numbers right around the North Atlantic. And the message they're giving us is that something is really wrong with the health of our rivers and oceans. And one of the key components there is the North Atlantic. And we're, we're seeing that the, the oceans are changing. The ocean is changing. Right. Uh, it's warming up. Um, Food availability is changing, currents are changing, that, that whole temperature regime in the Atlantic is, is happening. And overfishing and how we're using the environment and what we're dumping into the sea is all taking its toll on the health of the ocean. So why are we on a river and not out in the ocean trying to stop factory fishing or whatever it is? Salmon are unique because they spend the first one, two, three, maybe even four, five years of their life in fresh water. And then they then go to sea and they'll spend one, two or three years at sea. What we're seeing is um, better quality fish that go to sea, these smolts, these um, young salmon that migrate down, down the rivers and out to sea. We're seeing that if they're of a better quality, slightly bigger, a bit chunkier, they've got two to three times the survival rate at sea. And whilst we, as an organisation, really can't influence that much what's happening at sea, what we can do is influence that start in life that we're giving the fish to give them the best chance to be able to thrive in this rapidly changing world. Do you think salmon, as, as compared to all the other species and, and wildlife that, that live and, and depend on the river, they're probably unique in that respect, that they're the only species in there that if we get it right for them, everything else follows? Yeah, they're one of those keystone species. And so what they're, what they're telling us, if the, if the salmon numbers are good, then the health of our rivers are good, and that's good for all forms of wildlife. We can really boil it down to what salmon need, and, and that's just simply cold, clean water. Project Deveron is really to gather the evidence of what the pressures are on, on this catchment, and it's to funnel all of our science and turn that into action on the ground. We are heading towards the, the Mill of Eden dam, a historic dam that's been here for over a, a hundred years, um, which is a, a, a problem for, for migrating salmon and trout um, and, and also eels. From here upstream there's over 11 kilometres of, of really good uh, quality habitat. Spawning ground, potential spawning ground. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and we're hoping by removing this dam that it'll create um, access to, to much needed cool, clean water upstream. So, so what we're saying is we want to keep the upper reaches of rivers, the spawning ground for, for many salmon. We want to try and restore those back to a, a much wilder state. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they're incredibly precious ecosystems for spawning and young fish. Yeah, no, absolutely. And also for water temperature. The main channel of the Devron is influenced by what all these little pieces of the jigsaw are doing. So if we if we can increase the tree cover here and on many of the tributaries all around, it'll hopefully reduce the temperature of the main Devron overall. 
Yeah. Um, we've seen the main Devron getting up to 21 Celsius in this last few years, which is, is really quite worrying. But this project's not just to benefit salmon, is it? There are other species that will benefit. By removing the, the, the weir here, um, the fish numbers are ultimately going to go up. So that, that will help other species such as otter, um, kingfisher. So it's, it's really, overall, it, it helps the entire ecosystem. where kind of changes from this sort of tree-lined ravine type landscape into the more of the moorland. It's pretty, isn't it? It's very pretty, isn't it? So, Alison, what are they doing here? So, these guys from the Devon Trust, they're um, catching fish by a method called electrofishing and then be put in the bucket and taken up to where we would then see the pit tagging being undertaken. They're brought up here where the team are sorting them through and doing the pit tagging. And once they get to sleep, um, they get measured so we can just check, check they're the right size to be tagged. What's the, what's the important information that you're going to get from tracking them? So when they uh, go out to sea, they'll go down the river here and they'll pass over two pit arrays, as they're called, which is um, something that's been put in the bottom of, of the river. And as they go past, they'll, um, we'll, they'll get ping, a ping happens, and we know that fish is on its way. And there's one further down, and then they go out to sea. So through this, we'll be able to learn about their uh, life in freshwater, how long it takes them to get from where they started from to uh, further down the catchment. And then they obviously go out to sea and because they're, it's this tiny little pit tag and there's no battery, it stays with them all their life. And when they come back from the marine environment, um, they come past a sonar fish counter, first of all. And that's when we can see them come in, see what length they are. And then they'll pass back over those two arrays because they'll be back up here from where they started from. Yes. And we'll be able to see how quickly they get up, back up through uh, the river system and also which ones make it. And we can do some analysis from that. We can repeat the process every year that, the, the, that is in um, and then we can see trends over time. So this, be this becomes like an index flagship river really, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And it also means that when we do the work, so if we remove a weir or we get the trees planted or we put structure in the river to make the habitat really good, we'll be able to see how those changes happen as well. See how that's affecting yeah. the fish directly. Absolutely. Does it tell you anything about what happens out at sea? So it is, will tell us about marine survival rates, so we'll know how long uh, salmon stay out at, at sea and whether, whether they come back in the first year, second year or third year. Um, but also there are many other um, species that are tagged in a similar way in the marine environment, including um, basking sharks and seals and other things. And they're part of other projects, so there are pit array type um, interventions in other parts of the world and other things like trawler catch are also scanned for pit tags. So if they crop up and they're not a pet pit tag that they know, um, they can now put that up into a bigger database and we can interrogate it to see whether so, it's so one So that's going to help potentially with the, with the bycatch issue? Well, it'll, it'll tell us whether or not some of our um, yes. smolts or salmon are being caught in bycatch. Yeah. Yes. So if you just put the net gently into the water, you see them swimming away, look, yeah. the stream. Away they go. Off you go. Hopefully see you again in a few years' time. Yeah. See you when you're much bigger. So Jimmy, David Attenborough said we've got 20 years and the Atlantic salmon will probably be extinct. To think of this river without a salmon anymore swimming in it is Tragedy. It's a tragedy. It's losing, it'll lose its soul and, and with it so much of its beauty. What reasons have we got to be cheerful? After witnessing um, all the great work that the Trust are doing up here, you know, it's inspiring to see um, the changes they're, they're, they're making. And here, Project Devon that we've witnessed over the last few days, it, I think is a great um, example of hope. It crystallizes hope with as they put it, putting science into action.
you know, it's not just about the salmon, it's about everything that they depend on. It's about improving biodiversity, which they're doing so well here, changing the landscape, safeguarding against climate change. It comes down to those all three important words. Cold, clean water. <laughs>